endocrine problem, and I'm wondering um, what, if any, efforts are being done to help. I've met a lot of the parents whose children have similar problems or the same problems, and I'm wondering what efforts, if any, I don't know, are being addressed to help their medical problems. Is there any plans for that? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm somewhat of, of the, on her, in, in her position, I'm, I've been dealing with the GI issues, the mitochondrial issues, the neurological issues, and the epileptic episodes. These, to, to the staff, this is autism that many of us face. It's what doesn't get discussed. We, we have what I refer to, or what I refer to as comorbid conditions. So when we, as parents, have children who are autistic, we have acidic diarrhea, projectile vomiting, we have unexplained rashes, we have unmet biological medical needs that are going unmet because these children tend to be dismissed on the basis of their behaviors. This is autism. It's not just perceptive behavior. This is autism. It's running after your child when he escapes the house. This is autism. It's not the cute little five-year-old anymore. These are what parents face every day. It's not just Rain Man. It's not just the cute kid that you see who's a bit odd. So the acidic diarrhea, the projectile vomiting, the inability to sleep puts families in financial crunches, emotional stupors, uh, and it just changes the way you go about your life. The trajectory of this human being's life is changed. And these scientists here are addressing the environmental influences and triggers to these conditions. And the hope rests in the environmental sciences. So, thank you. I wanted to specifically try to answer your question. This has been a passion of mine because my son had those same unrecognized problems and then we took him to the doctor. We were just told, you know, kids with autism have seizures, we don't know why. Kids with autism have gastrointestinal problems, we don't know why. And there was no effort to evaluate my son and treat him appropriately. And to me, that is a violation of human rights. I've been pushing this issue very hard with the Interagency Autism Coordinating Committee at our next meeting in July. We have invited the president, or we're planning to invite, this just happened on Tuesday, which was our last meeting, of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Because we have enough science now that documents these abnormalities in children, but we don't have that science being translated to our clinicians, specifically our pediatricians, to be able to refer these children to get appropriate evaluations and treatments. So I'm really, really hoping that this next meeting will be able to establish some type of allegiance with the American Academy of Pediatrics, get them to maybe dedicate a journal to evaluating children with autism medically, because once you correct some of these underlying problems, it's amazing how the behaviors start to melt away. When a child is able to finally digest their food, they get nutrition to their brain. With my son, his cholesterol levels went from 90 to 130, and he gained 14 pounds in a year. That made a dramatic improvement, and we're overlooking those types of, you know, very uh, low-hanging fruit in terms of improving the lives of these children. So I would also ask if you are here in the D.C. area, please sign up for public comment. Please submit written comment to the committee. Please come and tell us your story. You'll have to be short, you'll have three minutes, but we'd love to have you there because we want to hear from parents. And the more we hear these stories, the more we can use that to drive policy.